Before the roar of the engine, there was only the sound of breath. The breath of men struggling against the weight of the earth. The breath of horses collapsing under centuries of labor. The breath of the wind pushing the sails, never reliable, never enough. For thousands of years, humanity lived bound by muscle and bone. Our strength was measured in calloused hands and aching backs. Every journey was paced by footsteps. Every structure lifted one stone at a time. Empires rose and fell at the speed a body could endure. Cathedrals climbed slowly toward the heavens, pulled upward by hands that could lift no more. Ropes frayed. Shoulders trembled under the weight of ambition. We carved mountains, bridged rivers, raised monuments to kings and gods. But all of it was dragged, pushed, and carried by flesh. The world was built on exhaustion, on the quiet, constant breaking of human bodies. But in the early 18th century, Britain stood at the edge of hunger. Its cities swelled with people. Its looms demanded thread. Its furnaces demanded fuel. Fields could not feed the mouths gathered in growing towns. Beneath its soil, unseen and silent, lay the fuel of the future. Coal, black fire, stored sunlight, pressed and hidden for millions of years. The key to everything that would come after. Yet nature guarded it with a simple, merciless force. Water, mines drowned, tunnels collapsed, pumps failed. Men worked by candlelight in narrow shafts while icy water crept higher with every hour. Every bucket carried upward was a battle against the weight of the earth itself, a struggle no human muscle could truly win. And so humanity turned to a new kind of servant, a crude machine of wood and iron bolted together in damp engine houses at the mouths of flooded mines. The Newcomen engine, it hissed, it groaned, it shook itself apart with every stroke. Great beams of timber rose and fell like the arms of a tired giant. It burned mountains of coal for a trickle of power. It was wasteful, slow, inefficient. But for a fragile moment, it was the best we could do. The first hint that motion itself could be captured and multiplied. In the winter of 1763, a broken model of this engine arrived at the University of Glasgow. Dusty, incomplete, barely able to move. It sat on a workbench beside brass instruments and cloudy glassware, a puzzle that no one had solved. Staring at it was not a titan of industry or a wealthy baron. It was a quiet, fragile man a maker of mathematical instruments, a man prone to migraines, who lived more in thought than in comfort, a man who carried storms inside his mind. His name was James Watt. He did not see a machine. He saw a tragedy, the tragedy of wasted energy. Heat, the very soul of fire, vanishing into the cold air with every stroke. To Watt, Inefficiency was not an inconvenience. It was the true enemy of progress, the silent thief of potential, stealing the future one heartbeat at a time. The problem haunted him. It followed him through the streets, into his workshop, into his sleep. It echoed like an unfinished sentence. The flaw was simple to describe and nearly impossible to fix. To create a vacuum, the cylinder had to be cooled. 
To raise the piston, it had to be heated again. Hot, cold, hot, cold. A cycle of waste locked into the bones of the machine. Watt knew there had to be a better way. But the answer lived somewhere just beyond reach, hidden in the fog of his imagination. Then, one Sunday afternoon, walking across Glasgow Green, the fog finally lifted. The idea struck him with the clarity of lightning. The separate condenser. Why cool the main cylinder at all? Why not keep it hot, as hot as the steam itself? And let the steam escape into a second chamber built for cold. Separate the two worlds. Let heat stay where it belonged. Let cold do its work far from the heart of the engine. It was elegant, simple, genius. In Watt's mind, the perfect engine was already running. Smooth, silent, efficient. A new heartbeat for a new world. But dreaming is easy. Building is war. The years that followed were filled not with triumph, but with rust and disappointment. Iron workers could not match the precision Watt required. Cylinders came warped, steam escaped, vacuums collapsed. The engine refused to breathe. Debt pressed down on him. His partner went bankrupt. Rain soaked nights as a surveyor became his only income. He walked across the countryside measuring canals. while the engine that could change the world gathered dust in a shed. In despair, he wrote, of all things in life, there is nothing more foolish than inventing. Then came the final blow. While he was away on a surveying job, a letter arrived. His wife, Margaret, the quiet center of his chaotic life, had fallen gravely ill. By the time he returned home, she was gone. He never said goodbye. Grief hollowed him. Failure mocked him. Debt suffocated him. The engine, once his greatest hope, became a monument to wasted years. He stood at the edge of surrender. The fire inside him dimmed to an ember, flickering in the dark. And then history intervened. At the moment, he was ready to abandon everything, a hand reached toward him, the hand of Matthew Bolton. Where he saw obstacles, Bolton saw empires. Where he hesitated, Bolton acted. A man who smelled the future in the smoke of industry. I sail here, sir, Bolton said. What all the world desires to have, power. He didn't want to buy the invention. He wanted the man behind it. He offered a partnership, a foundry, resources, craftsmen, patience. Everything the idea needed to live. With Bolton's support, Watt attacked the impossible once more. The breakthrough came not from science, but from war. John Wilkinson, the Iron Master, had built a cannon-boring machine capable of carving iron with a precision the world had never seen. From him, Watt obtained something he had never possessed before, a perfect cylinder. For the first time, the machine matched the mind. It was 1776. Across the ocean, a new nation declared independence. But in Birmingham, another revolution ignited. 
Coal burned, water boiled, pressure rose, the air trembled. Wait for it. The piston moved, not with a shudder or a gasp, but with smooth, rhythmic certainty. Up and down, up and down, like the heartbeat of a giant awakening from sleep. But Watt was not done. With the sun and planet gear, he turned vertical motion into rotation, into wheels turning, into factories breathing, into a world accelerating. Motion became power, and power became meaning. Energy once trapped in mines spilled outward across a nation. It spun the looms of Manchester. Hammered the iron of Sheffield. lifted the flour mills of London. Pulled trains across landscapes. Drove ships against the wind. For the first time in history, Humanity was free from the limits of muscle, wind, and water. We had captured the sun, stored in coal, and turned it into motion. Watt and Bolton did not build a machine. They built the heartbeat of the modern world. James Watt lived long enough to see his name revered. But his true monument is not a statue in Westminster Abbey. It is the world around us. The glow of the screen before you. The hum of electricity in the walls. The engines, the cities, the endless motion of modern life. All of it still echoes with the pulse of his idea. Yet every revolution has a price. The skies darkened. The world grew hotter. The quiet breath of the earth was replaced by the roar of industry. Watt wanted to save energy. He hated waste. And the irony is cruel. His invention unleashed the greatest wave of consumption the planet has ever seen. But we cannot go back. We move forward, driven by the same spark that drove him. The belief that there is always a better way. That even within failure, even within grief, a new idea waits to be found. It began with a kettle. It ended with a world transformed. And yet, steam was only the first flame. Because while fire powered the engines of the earth, another force, invisible, silent, weightless, waited in the dark. A force that could leap through air, that could flow without mass, that could bind the world with light. The next revolution would not roar. It would whisper. It would spark. If you want to witness how humanity captured that invisible fire, how a single spark reshaped the future, join us in the next chapter. The Invisible Machine, The Birth of Electricity. If this journey moved you, inspired you, or simply made you wonder, please consider subscribing and supporting the channel. Your support keeps these stories alive, and together, we will explore the engines that built our world.